Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in the next update we have some pretty cool stuff for you on the FLIR, both in the air-to-air -air and the air-to-ground. Now let's first take a look at the air-to-ground though. So go to air-ground master mode, and let's place the FLIR on the uh, right DDI. And first things first, let's go ahead and set the throttle designator control, or the TDC, uh, to the FLIR. And to do that, we'll go sensor control switch right, because the FLIR is on the right DDI. And we do that, and now we have the TDC assignment diamond in the corner. Now, as you may recall from my last FLIR video, we added the velocity vector slave mode, uh, VVSLV. But to enable or disable that, we, it was a little bit clunky, you had to actually press on the push tile. Now what we can do is, if you double click the undesignate button uh, twice in less than a second, we can do the same thing. So, enable, and notice it disables reticles, and disable. Uh, below that we have a gray box function, allows you to calibrate your video. And coming over, we're going to go to the FLIR from the CCD. And we have the ALG function, and that's for automatic level gain. And when it's boxed, it automatically does it for us. But if we unbox, we're in manual mode, and if we click on zoom, we can go to level, and we can manually adjust our levels. Click it again, we can adjust our gains. Let's go back to uh, automatic. Now we'll go back to CCD. And in the corner, we have an attitude indicator, which will show our roll. And as we start putting angle attack on the jet, the icon in the middle will change. So right now we're, we're in what's called snowplow mode, where the FLIR is looking ahead of us and a bit down and moving along with us, as you can see. But in this mode, we can slew it around. And when we find a location we're interested in, we'll depress the throttle designator controller, TDC. And now we also have a laser uh, range as well. And up on the HUD, note that the diamond is now segmented, indicating that it can still be slewed, as you can see. At any point, we can hit the undesignate button to go back to snowplow mode. Uh, this used to be the cage on cage button. Let's go back and designate. And the next step is, because we have the FLIR on the right DDI, if we go right on the sensor control switch, we go to an area track mode, or ATRK, and it's tracking that scene. And note that the diamond now is solid, which also means that we can no longer slew it at this point. If we go right again on the sensor control switch, we go into a point track. And again, at any point, we can hit on designate to go back into snowplow mode. So this has a lot of functionality and realism to the pod. And we're still working on uh, coordinates as well as uh, bullseye uh, coming a bit later. Okay, now let's take a look at air-to-air. -air. Okay, so to use the FLIR in air-to-air -air mode, the first thing we'll do is either select an air-to-air -air weapon or the air-to-air -air master mode. In this case, I'll go ahead and select an AIM-120. And we do that, we see that we have the air-to-air -air radar on the right DDI in the FLIR and air-to-air -air mode on the left side. But given that we're going to use the FLIR first to lock a target up, let's go ahead and assign the throttle designator controller, or TDC, to the left DDI by going left on the sensor control switch. And we do that, we see we have the diamond now. Now also note, on the FLIR DDI, we have the velocity vector uh, slave box. So we're going to place the velocity vector over one of the contacts ahead of us. And now we're going to go left on the sensor control switch, and left because the FLIR is on the left DDI. And we do that, we initiate a track on that target, and on the HUD we have a box around it with an F below it, indicating that FLIR is the only sensor uh, tracking that particular target. Now, let's say we want to have the radar also track the same target. In that case, we'll go to the radar section here and press Slave. And now we see we have a box around it still, but now we have a C below the box indicating the contact is correlated between both the FLIR and the radar at the same time. Let's go ahead and dump the FLIR lock. So right now, the radar is the only sensor tracking it, in indicated by no F or no C below it. But let's say now we want to have the FLIR track it after all. In that case, we'll go to the RRSLV and box it. 
and now that put the FLIR on the same line of sight as a radar contact, and we'll go left on the sensor control switch to initiate a track again, and again, now we're back to a correlated track on the same target. Anyhow, folks, those are some of the updates coming for the targeting pod. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.